Welcome to Holistic Accountant Podcast, where we aim to showcase how adopting a holistic approach in accounting and tax maximizes value for clients. Beyond traditional tasks like preparing financial statements and tax returns, a holistic accountant focuses on offering advice that maximizes personal wealth on an after-tax basis. If you enjoy this episode, please consider leaving a rating and sharing it with those who might also benefit. And to ensure you stay updated, subscribe to our weekly email. The link is in the show notes. Okay, today Mina and I would like to talk about a really exciting and interesting topic. You know, who's going to look after your business when you die? It's not an exciting topic. It's not something that we really want to necessarily contemplate or think about, but it is an important topic. And it's an important topic for a couple of reasons. You know, firstly, if you have value in your business and therefore it's part of your estate, of course, you'd want to capture that value for your beneficiaries. You don't want it just to disappear. And secondly, you know, I may Imagine you also want to look after your staff and your customers as well, you know, and if you've put your blood, sweat and tears in a particular business, it'd be a shame to see it just disappear when you disappear. So it's something that we really want to think about longevity beyond us and then capturing and handing over that value onto your beneficiaries, as I said. There's a lot of considerations which Mina and I will talk about today, but of course, this is very general advice and it's going to be different for every person's situation, but we can just mention some general considerations. So the first one I'd like to talk about is your executors. Your executors, sometimes they're called trustees, are responsible for implementing your wishes that are outlined in your will. Quite often we choose executors that are close to us personally. So brothers, sisters, sometimes parents, you know, very close friends, those sorts of people because we trust them. And quite often, you know, particularly if you've got children, guardianship is a big part of your will as well. And you just want to make sure your kids are well looked after naturally. But those executors won't necessarily have the skill and experience to deal with business decisions. You know, if it's about dealing with a share portfolio or an investment property portfolio, of course, you can point them in direction of your financial advisor, who's probably been helping you make all the decisions in the past anyway. So it's a much easier handover. But if it's about business, you know, it's about sort of strategy management, staff management. And if it's about a business exit, then it's sort of getting it ready for sale, dealing with the tax consequences of sale and then going through that whole sale process. So that's the first thing that you really want to think about is who are your executors and what instructions are you going to give to your executors to kind of help them make those decisions? And it might be that you instruct the executors to outsource that to someone that is actually capable of taking over, someone that knows your business well, could be someone that's within your business already that you're happy to take the helm of. So it's really important to sort of assess which people are around you that are capable or have the necessary experience to take the business over, and more importantly, the time to do so. The secondary consideration is obviously, should you actually keep the business? If there is no one capable of, you know, running the business, you don't want someone just at the helm that will run it to the ground, you're better off doing a trade sale. So it might be that, you know, as part of your will, should someone not be capable of taking over the business, that you offer it out to the public so that you can get the full sort of price for the business and your estate can benefit from it. Probably the easiest way to deal with these matters is to draft what's called a letter of wishes. Because obviously, as businesses change and staff within the business change, your wishes and instructions around the business might change also. And so you want to be able to have this live document that you can update whenever you want to update without needing to go through the rigmarole of drafting a a new will. So for example, your will might leave instructions or should leave instruction how the estate is going to be distributed. But the letter of wishes could say things like, go and speak to our accountant, go and speak to our financial advisor, engage them for advice and just act in the role of overseer of that advice. So again, you're sort of taking the obligation off their hands to some extent, certainly the time obligation to be over the top of these sorts of things and they can just play like a kind of board of directors role and your advisors who already should understand your business can report to them on those certain matters. Also in those letter of wishes, you can say, for example, why don't you offer the business for sale to this individual in the business or these individuals in the business first and foremost? And maybe what you might want to put in that letter of wishes is say you're happy to take a bit of a haircut on the market value in order to see the business handed over to the people that are already 
in the business, know the business, know the clients, and will maybe maximize or ensure that the business thrives beyond you. And if that doesn't work, of course, then you can put in a letter of wishes. If that doesn't work, of course, look at a third party sale. The last consideration is to basically try to at least have discussions prior to, you know, you moving on about what your succession plan is and have discussions with key people within your business to sort of float the ideas of what their roles and responsibilities would be should you move on and whether they're sort of happy to take on those roles and responsibilities. Secondly is the license aspect. Your business might have particular licenses in place that, you know, help you to trade. Like, for example, in our business, we have a tax agent license, you know, financial services license or an A for sale, you know, a credit mortgage license, what would actually happen to those licenses after and these key persons have moved on or the directors have moved on. So in, there needs to be a succession planning on that front too so that your business can continue on, whether it be through a trade sale or, you know, handing it down to someone. There needs to be a clear action plan regarding these key people and licenses. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of, you know, what are the specific issues as a business owner that you need to really think about from a state planning level. Of course, there's all the normal estate planning considerations as well in terms of handing across the states and binding death benefit nominations, structure of will, all those sorts of things that apply to most people or all people. This is really just around the business aspect of your estate and being able to manage that. But a good holistic accountant should be able to talk to you about these matters. And whilst they're not going to be legal specialists or even planning specialists, they're going to be able to point you in the right direction. And also make sure, most importantly, you've considered many of these factors. You know, we meet new clients all the time and it's very common that they don't even have a will it's always on people's to-do list you know they recognize the importance of it but they just kind of never get around to doing it and of course you hope that it's not urgent either (laughs) that you've got plenty of time up your sleeve to do it but the most important thing is just to consider these factors you know as long as you've considered it and you've taken at least some steps towards making it as smooth as possible for the people left behind that goes a very long way to making it easier if you've got no instructions what whatsoever you haven't considered it, it makes it a lot more difficult for the people left behind in order to help them make decisions and also work out who to trust. Okay, that's it from us for this week. Until next week, bye for now.